Hello, everyone. In case you don't know who it was, or it is, it's me, Frank Collada. First of all, I want to thank you all for that $10,000 mark that I wanted to reach. That's the beginning. Prescribers. I call it prescribers. I know it's subscribers, but I like to say prescribers. All right? Thank you so much. 10000 is the first goal. I'm trying for 30 now. I'm working hard at it. And by the way, don't forget, buy the cup, and you can get what you want on these cups now on the back if you want to change that. All right? It's listed there. I don't know the, the name you order it through, but you'll find it. If you like me, you'll find it. Now, I want to talk a little bit about my tour. And Adam and I are, are sort of partners in his tour. Let's put it like that. We're sort of partners. I have uh, Adam's tour is called Vegas Mob Tours. All right? And he's got a nice nice bus. Could take more than two people. It could take 13 people. And it's a real, really a good tour. I'm not bullshitting you. It's a very good tour. Now, I have a private tour. The most I'd like to take is two people. And I take them usually in my car. Now we're not opening right. We're not open right now, of course, with this virus running around. But we are going to be definitely open by the middle of next month, for sure. We could have done it now, but better to be safe than be sorry. Okay. So now you know where we're standing with the tours. They're easy to find us. Both Vegas mob tours. He call it Vegas specialty tours. Look that up. Mine is called Frank Collada Casino Mop Tour, all right? Now, our next goal, I just said it earlier, is to try to get 30,000 prescribers. The tour is going to be in virtual reality. I hope you know what that means, virtual reality. Oh, there I am. Hey. This guy got me on monitors so, uh, all over the freaking joint. We just got a question from Josh. Josh. He wants to know if you met Peter Pitch. I never heard of the name. Peter Pitch? Yeah, Peter Pitch. That's what he asked. No, Josh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, Josh. I don't know who Peter Pit, uh, Pitch is. <laughs> um, Google Paisano said uh, that he missed the pizza making. We haven't. We haven't oh, started yet. wait started. a minute. The video's coming. The video's coming. I just went through this bullshit with this pizza. You know, I retired a long time ago. For you people, I went through it again. I'm a little rusty, but the book is going to be there to help you out. And we're going to go back to it and finish it up in a little while as soon as I get rid of all you bums. Hey, Frank, we got another question from Tony Smith. Tony Smith, an wants, alias. he wants to know, hey, Frank, did you ever have any dealings with Jimmy Michaels from the Cuckoos? From the, from the Cuckoos, yeah. He was blown up in 1980 by the Le Leisure Brothers. No, I don't. That don't even ring a bell to me. Where are they out of, I wonder? Tony Chicago? Smith? I don't know where Tony's from. Where is, does it say where he's from? It doesn't say where he's from. But, um, yeah, he wanted to know that. There's people saying hello from Newcastle, from uh, England. Oh yeah, they're from. In we got people from right Brooklyn, on, brothers. Brooklyn. We're trying to do this. This is the first time I ever went live. You notice I'm not camera shy either, right? Huh? I shouldn't be. All the cameras I took pictures in front of. Okay, Josh. Josh is back. Again. Josh is back again. Yeah, Josh and Jesus. He said, "Did you ever deal with Stevie DeSalvo? Stevie DeSalvo." No, Josh, I'm sorry to say that name don't even... I do know DeSalvo, but I don't know... No, I'm sorry, Josh, I can't help you. Um, how, hey, hey, Frank from River Grove, Illinois, there was... Oh, I used to live in River Grove. What can I do for you? Somebody wants to know if there's any gangsters from Connecticut. Not in Chicago. Not in Chicago. No Connecticut gangsters. I strictly dealt in the Chicago outfit. You know, glad to take along any fans. They want to hop on the bus. Hop on, baby. So you got 133 people live right now. Did you ever, Live? Yeah, did you? That's how many are watching right this instant, 133. Did you ever think in a million years what you would that you would be doing this today? Not in my wildest dreams. Not in my wildest dreams. 
I always ran from cameras. If you look at half of these wise guys that I socialized with, they love to go in front of cameras. I always ran from cameras because I knew one day they'd come back to haunt me. But now I'm a legit guy. And I'm not camera shy, as you could tell. So, so uh, Josh, Josh and Jesus asked, did you ever know Steve DeSalvo? And you didn't, uh, you say you don't know uh, who they are. He said, both guys I asked about are from the Ballesteri family, Pitch and DeSalvo. No, yeah, Ballesteri is from Kansas City. Okay, so you didn't hang no, with these guys? No, I didn't hang with Kansas City. Sorry, I know Josh. Ballesteri. Yes. Sorry, Josh. But I know the guys, I know the, the bosses over there, you know, because of the skim at the startups. Okay, antiques and collectible. Frank, who took over after Nonos died? Actually, as far as I know, and I believe me when I say I should know, when Johnny Bananas, I call him Johnny Bananas, when he died, there was nobody that took over. Now they claim that his brother Pete took over. I doubt that very seriously. I doubt if there's anybody connected with that Elmwood Park crew that are any bosses. There might be some guys, but they're not nothing that I would consider big heavyweights. Now, Johnny died, he died. That's it. Hey, shout out to Dave Fox. Thanks, huh? Dave. Shout out to Dave. Shout out to Dave. Yeah, shout out to Dave Fox. Hey, Dave. How you doing, Dave Fox? I thought it was the channel, Fox News. Huh? You'd be he lucky said, to have me, Fox. <laughs> Josh and Jesus said the Ballesteri family was from Milwaukee. Not yeah. Cleveland, Milwaukee. You Milwaukee. said Cleveland. Yeah, you meant. The fucking Milwaukee. cities all confuse me. Kansas City. All right, Chad. Chad Weismer said, "Can we do some more Joey Hansen info?" And what do you think? Joey you Hansen. Know, uh, Sal Bastone or Larner or Robert Cooley and Michael Corbett. Robert Corbett. Cooley was a lawyer. He was a lawyer that rolled over and wore a wire. Uh, and. Uh, Joey Hanson, we could do Joey. You know, I tell you, I know Joey since he's 13 years old. And uh, Joey was uh, Joey was a pretty crazy guy. He was a dangerous little guy. He almost looked like an albino because he had blonde hair, natural blonde. And he had a violent, violent temper. He was probably, he knew Tony before I knew him. And he was sort of jealous when other people would get close with Tony. I guess he was insecure. But Joey, Joey lived in California for, till he died, till he died. He lived in uh, Rodondo Beach. No, uh, what is that name of that place over there? Rodondo Beach? I forgot. Uh, I forgot, that'll come back to me later on. But I know he lived in California. I know he originally went to Rodondo Beach. That I know for sure. Because when he moved to Rodondo Beach, he was selling cars there. And we robbed a, we robbed a big store there in Rodondo Beach. Joey I and his kid Frankie. And when Joey was living there. So, but where did he go? I can't think of the damn name of the place. Anyway, what's the difference? No big deal. We're still in California. All right. Gus Veltisaros wants to know, did you know Gus Alex and how powerful was he? Gus e. Alex was a powerful guy, but he wasn't powerful as, they, as you were, the way you're saying it. He was a powerful guy. You couldn't out and out go up to him with muscle him because you'd have to grow through somebody. So in other words, he had a little protection around him too. Uh, Gussie Alex, I know Gussie. He was all right, Gussie. Uh, I didn't have to take orders from him, but if I was in his territory, of course I would have to get permission to do something there. And then I get it from the, the guy that was in charge of him. There was always somebody in charge of somebody. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, here. Frank, do you like black people? I have no problem with blacks. I used to hate them. I hate, I got to tell you the truth. When I went to school in Montefiore, you know, I hated them. I, I didn't know where these people come from because I was brought up in a white neighborhood. And then I go to this bad boy school with all these black kids, and they hated white people. Let me tell you something. Tony and I went to spot show. We used to fight them every day. But then we come to find out as we got older, it doesn't matter with these people. They're misled. They're misled like 99% of them are. That's the only problem is people make money off of that racism bullshit. It's all bullshit. There are more educated blacks out there than there are whites. Go ahead. Get off the 
Right, bullshit. I want to talk about it. No, no, no kid. Hey, you know, you're not really black if you if you're gonna vote for Trump. Don't forget that. Who said that? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Yeah. He's seen all that bastard. I wish he does runs against Trump. He can't find the door handle on the door to get out of the car. Guy's goofy. Trump. You Trump's guys, a good guy. Well, you know, you're not supposed to talk politics, but Trump's a good guy. Sometimes you ask people, why don't you like Trump? They don't even know why they don't like him. You know what? The guy's all right. Okay, Tony Smith wants to know. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Jimmy was friends with Tony Giordano, and they both had interest in the Aladdin Hotel in Vegas. He was a St. Louis gangster from the Prohibition era. Do you know who this uh, Jimmy was? You know, as far as I can tell you about, did you say the Aladdin? Did he say the Aladdin? Yeah, he was part owner. He had an part part owner. Aladdin. The, the Aladdin was owned by Detroit people. And Ash Resnick was their manager in there. So we, we could do anything we wanted in the Aladdin. We didn't take any of their money out of there because Detroit had it. But uh, I don't know the guy you're talking about. I may have met him, but, like, I didn't hang with him, you know. You got to get really familiar with these guys to be around them a lot to remember their names. And plus, you'd, I would bring them heat, they would bring me heat, especially in that industry. You don't want to bum around with these guys or them want to bum around with us. Go ahead. You're up to almost 300. we got 297 people watching right now. Keep on watching. Get off your ass. Put the TV on or whatever you watch. YouTube, YouTube, whoever thought YouTube be like this. All right, we got another question from Gus Veltasaros. Not a nice Italian boys, huh? Did you have interactions with uh, the L.A. crime family? We used to call them the Mickey Mouse gangsters, L.A. Mickey Mouse gangsters, Cohen and all them guys. They were in shit, them guys. They had it okay through anybody they went through. We controlled the, like, Fratiano. That was a stupid in Fratiano. A California gangster, right? Where's he from? New York, Friday, I know. <laughs> anyway, forget about California. They don't last night. The cops are out there. Were the, the cops in L.A. were the gangsters, all right? All right, what else? Uh, Josh and Jesus said you guys are skipping my super chats. We're not skipping them. We're answering your questions. Who's Josh again? Yeah, did we miss a question from Josh? Josh, you want too much TV time. Oh, how much? How much? Well, they're paying for this. So oh, I'm sorry, Josh. sending money for it. So right. how much respect did Frank Faust... Uh, uh, about the theory have in the outfit and the mob in general. It, give him a lot of respect. You give guys like that respect. There's no doubt about it. If he proved to be an idiot or whatever, then he wouldn't get the respect. No, they were good people. Uh, so believe me when I tell you, the Bellasteries were all right. Hey, when you were in the witness protection program, not only did you work for the uh, uh, for the border patrol, right? But you also got a job at a racetrack, right? As a security guard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I I work. I I uh, I got a job as a security guard. They didn't know I had. I had a phony name, and uh, I was the smartest guard there. And the the guard that was the head captain or whatever he was, he was an idiot. This guy. And I could catch any crook I wanted there because if you're a crook, you think like a crook, and you could catch these guys. But every it was loaded with the Spanish guys. It was a it was a training center, and it was in Fallbrook, California. I mean Bonzo, and they call it San Luis Rey Downs. I even was licensed with the Horse Racing Commission. I could go on any track I wanted, and do what I wanted. They never knew who the frig I was. When I worked for the Border Patrol. They never knew who I was. They had to run me through the Pentagon. This is what I was told. In order to get a job working for the Border Patrol, now I wasn't a cop, I used to maintain all their vehicles. They had 77 vehicles there. I got in the door in there because I my price was a little lower than the next guy. And I passed it. They, I went right through. I don't know how the hell I got through there to work on federal grounds. I got that license. I, could st I still got the license. I could show it to you. Okay, this is from Dave Fox. Um, hey, Frank, did you know the Briatas from Taylor Street? They're cousins with the Marcy family. Yeah, I know the Briatas. Like, again, I'm going to tell you, not well enough to hang around with, well enough to respect them, all right? 
And what was the other family they were around? With? He said they were they were friends with the Marcy family, the Briata. Marcy. But did you know Sam Battaglia? Yeah, I know Sam Battaglia real well. He said this, uh, this. Dave said that his former neighbor, his former neighbor was uh, Jean Mormino. His daughter married Sam's son. And I don't know about the the relationships of the family. I know Sam was a boss, you know. All but, right. Turbo Jones wants to know what's a second story guy. <laughs> that means <laughs> that means he goes he can go in a high rise apartment building, you know, burglarize. You know, when I say go with them, he's burglarizing the second story, high rise, second story and up, you know, instead of a, a regular house, you know, it'd be like a house two flat, three flat. Okay, here's a, here's a question. I don't know if there's any relation, but the name is George Ailman. And he said, hi, Frank. Greetings from Taylor Racine. Tell me more about Harry Ailman and Butchie and the Wild Bunch. Well, I don't know if you're related to Harry Ailman. But when I got out of jail uh, in 74, I started hearing about Harry Ailman and, and, and uh, Butchie Petroselli. They call him the Wild Bunch. Now, one of them was related to Joe Ferriola. Uh, I believe it was, uh, I'm not quite sure. You know, I lost track of it. It was either Butch or Harry. They were married into the family. Now, Harry wasn't 100% of they. And they were, he was a bouncer at a, at some kind of a discotheque or whatever it is. A little, little slightly built guy. Wasn't a, uh, a kind of guy you look at and be scared of. It was slender built. But he was dangerous. The, my first meeting with Harry, I owned a, a nightclub in, uh, in uh, River Grove. And I knew this kid, McCarthy, his name was. And he brought these two guys in there, Harry and Butchie. They had a truckload of liquor. And he introduced me to them. Of course, I knew who they were when he introduced me. They thought I was going to buy the load, the whole truckload. What am I going to buy a whole truckload of liquor when I got this disco? I can't sell it. So that was my first encounter with them. And I could tell immediately when I first heard I could look in his eyes and Butchie, crazy bastards, I know. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. I know killers. All right? And I told him I can't do them no good. If they wanted to sell me 15 cases, I could do it. They said, no, no, thank you. Now, about a month later, the guy that introduced me to him, this had nothing to do with him getting found killed or anything. But his body was found at O'Hara Field in the trunk. McCarthy, his name was. Somebody completely different from the M&M murders. They found him in a trunk. And uh, uh, I don't want to go into any further with it. I don't know Donna really. All right, how about a shout out to George Kaius? Who? George Kaius. I, I don't think I'm saying it right. No, he just wants a shout out. Hey, how you uh, doing, my friend? Good to see you again. Shout out back to you, brother. Have a good one. Okay, Gus Velt Veltasaros. How much control did the outfit have in construction? And did they get a piece of the Willis Tower or the Sears Tower? It's the no. Sears Tower. Who controlled the drug trade in Chicago back then? You know, let's start off with the Sears Tower. They didn't have nothing to do with the Sears Tower. Sears Tower. Construction, of course. Anybody that was making money, looking at a lot of money, of course the outfit was going to cut in on, especially trucking businesses. Any cargo, trucks, cargo. Construction. I know quite a few people are in a construction business. Waste management. Toxic stuff. Control all that shit. Get it from people. Uh, no. What was the other one about? Who controlled the drug trade? All right. That drug trade went back even before I realized it. And that actually, I would say it started out with, with Matt Sam. His brother was pushing it. And they weren't supposed to in other words, they were allowed to do it, but it wasn't supposed to be known that the outfit, the Chicago outfit, uh, was getting a percentage of whatever Sam pushed because they always wanted to keep their, like it was a dirty business. But eventually I found out about it, and eventually I guess Sam's brother, the one Sam killed, exposed it a little bit so that Sam had to kill his brother. Sam, all right, go ahead. Okay, Josh and Jesus, he said... There's a rumor that Frank Ballesteri was thinking about killing Joe Bonanno. Did you ever hear anything like that? No, I never did. Joe Bonanno would have been out of Florida. Uh, he was actually out of New York at first, then they moved to Florida. 
the banana family. You know, I don't know. I okay. doubt it, but. Okay, Chad Weismer. He said, uh, any information on the Daniel Seifert hit? Yeah, well, they put Joe Lombardo in jail for it. Yeah, he went to jail for it. Okay. Um, That's the only one that Joe went, went for. It. He just died, Joe Lombardo. Uh, George Kaisa said, uh, did you know Art Gorelli, Frank? Art Gorelli? Yeah, I did, George, but I can't. I can't. I know the name real well, but you got to remember, George. A lot of, like I said previously, if you don't hang with a guy day in and day out, and it's just a passing guy, hey, I don't, George. That's another story. I don't. I don't remember. Okay, Tony Smith wants to know if you had to choose one dish: linguine with clam sauce or spaghetti and meatballs with marinara sauce. Which one? God, darn it, my friend. I love them all. How can I make a choice? I can't make a choice. It depends how horny you want to be. Now, if you're eating with clam sauce, that means you want to get horny. Clams get you horny, right? <laughs> That's the truth. I love it. But so sometimes I kick back to it, you know. A fettuccine Alfredo, you know, it's a little too rich. All right, shout out to Jerry Mira. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. How you doing, brother? There you go. Peace, peace. What the heck? Come my hands moving. All right, there you go. Joe, but uh, Joe Zapata. This guy's right. American. That's why he can't pronounce some Joe, Italian names. Joe, Joe Zapata. Joe Zapata. Joe Zapata. Yeah. Did you ever? Uh, did you or the outfit ever run into Howard Hughes in Chicago? No, nah, I never anything. run into. That. Guy like Howard Hughes would run from us, you know, because he know if he got too close to us, we'd muscle him. We never muscle Howard. All right, hey, we're going to wrap it up. we got 450 people watching. You could um, do better than that. Yeah. Wrap it up. It's your buck. Enjoy talking to y'all. God Thanks. bless. And don't forget, the cops, the cops. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks a, for watching. Oh, you talking? Yeah, I'm just going to say uh, hi to everybody. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks, for, thanks for talking and watching, guys. And, uh, and uh, we'll see you soon. Maybe we'll do this once a week. This would be fun. Uh, we'll see. All right.